the one thing I, I've learned, man, that uh, life is precious. Mm -hmm. Right, life is precious, and I I learned that one day. I I was coming from the store. I had uh, run some errands, and uh, I was about a block away from my house. Mm -hmm. And I was at the uh, I was at the light. I was making a left hand turn. It's at a major intersection. I live in Inglewood, California. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I was making a left hand turn. I was in the left lane, and I was sitting there. I, I hear this sound like, Voof, right? It was real quick, Voof, and then all of a sudden my mirror, my driver's side mirror exploded. Wow. And then I, I had all this glass and stuff on me. You know, I had, it's like it just shattered. It was almost like dust. Wow. My, mirror, my mirror shattered and I, uh, and I was looking and I, I didn't know what happened. I thought someone threw something at my car. Right. Right? And uh, I saw, then I looked around and I saw people on the street running and ducking for cover. Oh. That's when I realized that was a bullet that I heard mm -hmm. that had come from behind me and shattered my winch, shattered my mirror. Wow. It was that close, man. I was just getting remade. Had I turned, it probably would have ripped right through my shoulder, through my chest. Wow. And uh, it really, it really. It shook me up, man. Yeah. And but it, I, I learned something very valuable from that. Mm. Is that I realized that there's a nigga out there who don't think I'm funny. Yeah, yeah. He didn't know no better. <laughs> yeah. He didn't know you no know better. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, if you don't think I'm funny, I'd rather you tell me <laughs> right. than show me that because I can fix it. Right. You know, I, I make light of it, sure. But, you know, life is precious, man. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm dealing with this. You know, we're dealing with all this COVID, all this. Man, it's crazy. Yeah, man. I, I didn't even want to leave out, leave the house. I know. It makes you think twice before you do. But Right. And I'm just glad to be out. I go to the markets. You see people. They got masks on. Right. You know, uh, everybody has masks. I remember the first time I went out to the store. And I, uh, after about three months, I went out, out and... Uh, I was out at the grocery store and there was this little, uh, there was this man, grand, looked like a grandfather, whooping his grandson's ass for something he had did in the store. Grandfather whooping the grandson? Yeah, whoop, yeah. grandfather whooping the grandson's yeah. ass yeah. in the store. They both, everybody masked. Yeah. You know, grandson masked, he's a little kid, crying with his mask on and shit. Yeah. And, I, and it brought tears to my eyes. You know, uh, it was tears of joy. Yeah. Because that was natural emotion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had, hadn't seen that in three months. Uh -huh. So I was kind of happy to see some real life right. shit. Oh, they still right? whooping ass out here. Whooping there ass. And I cheered him on. I was whooping his <laughs> ass, granddaddy. <laughs> yeah. Whooped that boy's ass. He That's probably so deserved it. No. You know, and it made me think about how I used to whoop my kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, you originally said that back in Inglewood. Are you from yes, Inglewood? Yes, I, I grew up. I, I, was, I, I wasn't born in Inglewood, but I grew up in Inglewood. I moved to Inglewood, and, and uh, I'm going to date myself for those watching. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we moved to Inglewood in 1967. Mm. Uh, we were part of the, what they call the uh, uh, Inglewood 100. It was the first 100 black families that moved to Inglewood. Wow. I was the second uh, black family. We were the second black family on my street. Mm. You know, when I moved to Inglewood, there were black there were white gangs and shit. Wow. Inglewood was 98% white. I heard that yes. it was like that a long yes. time ago. Wow. Yes, and we moved in and the white folks next to us moved out. So they taking back their land right yes, now? Yes, they That's are. What's happening with you That's what's happening. Yeah, they coming back. They coming wow. back, man. But we were, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah. But I can remember when it happened. They moved down one side of the block and then came right back up the other side of the block. Wow. It was like dominoes. Wow. You know? But it, it was it's, it's interesting, man. I just seen it. You seen a lot. You seen a lot. Because yeah, the eighties and nineties, the gangs took off, and then the, the all the crack. I remember the when pandemic. the gang started. Uh, when all they used to do was fight. Yeah. You know what I'm the worst that would happen to you, somebody you might get stomped you out. Bleeding. Yeah. Or, or maybe right. maybe somebody got occasional stabbing. Right. You know, but you live to talk about it. People live to talk about it. They may right. take your leather coat or something. I don't know how I went down this past about gangs. Like you asked me about yeah, it. Yeah. I was never in the gang. Yeah. See, I, I wasn't in the gang. I was a jock, man. I played ball. Nice. You know, and I was a I was a smart kid, but I never went to school. Mm. So I, I would I would get a I would get A's on the finals. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go to school the, almost the entire semester, get A's on the final, but they I got end up kicking out getting kicked out of school for lack of days of attendance. Mm. So show me how that is, right? Damn. But you're still killing the test. Yeah. That's how it works. Well, yeah. you had the potential. Yeah. Had the potential. So I, I floundered through life, man, for a while, you know, uh, yeah. uh, doing this and doing that. I was I was a jock. Like I said, I went to college. I played some football. Okay. I want, I thought I was going to end up playing on Sundays, and that didn't happen. Mm. Right? Didn't want it bad enough. 
and then I uh, got to the workforce, man. So how did this your, your workforce transition into comedy? What were you doing for most of your your life or your career path that That's led you to comedy? That's funny because when people see me, they 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 tend not to they kind of prejudge what I do. Mm. Uh, I'm an IT manager for aerospace defense contract. Nice. Right? I've been an IT professional for over 30 years now. Mm. But generally because uh, of a black man in that. Right. Who you play for? Who you used to play for? Yeah. Or, right. or if I tell them I work for this, they, I used to work for Exxon Mobil. Okay. Right? I was the West Coast lead for, for, Exos, for West, uh, Exxon Mobil. Nice. And uh, a lot of people that I tell them I work for Exxon Mobil, first thing they ask me, well, you drive a truck. Right, right. <laughs> you know? like, no. I mean, hey, truck drivers make good money there. Don't <laughs> right. get me wrong. But still, that, for them to no, automatically think that, right, right, right. That's not what I did. Right. You know, um, so, uh, and I got into comedy, man. I got into comedy at the, I'm 61. Okay. I got into comedy at age 57. Wow. This is my fourth year of comedy. Oh, now you got my, oh, I'm interested. Right? I want to hear that. That's what's up. When I did Laugh After Dark, I had been doing <laughs> comedy about six months. Wow. You know, fortunately, uh, I was able to luck up on there. I mean, now the, the qualifications are a lot harder. <laughs> yeah. right? You got to audition See, to get on the shows one, now. Season one, that season one. Right, but I was on season one. Yeah. And I, I got in there, and I think I did relatively well for yeah. the end of six months comedy. Yeah, man, definitely. You know, uh, uh, but I, I've always been funny. You know, this is something I do. Right. Comics, I think we're just... You know, we're just funny. That's yeah. just what we are. Right. I've been funny since I was a kid. Right. So people ask me now, doing, uh, do, do you, how you miss doing comedy? I never stop. I've been right. doing comedy my whole life. I'm comedy is me. Right. Right. I'm always making jokes. I'm always laughing. So I may not be doing it on a stage or, or at a club somewhere. Right. You know, I'm still being funny. Right. But I gotta say, with mask on. It's a little harder <laughs> because I do a lot of joking in public. When I'm at stores and stuff, I right. joke a lot, right? Right, right? I joke, and I notice that if they can't see your face. Can't see that smile, man. Yeah, you know, they kind of take a little, little intimidated. Yeah, all you see is my eyes right, and shoulders. Right, right. Like, Hold up, so man. it's got to be really funny for them to laugh at it because it can't be part way. <laughs> right. So it doesn't, and then you can't tell if they're laughing either because you can't wow. see me smile. You got to hear, listen for that. Shit. Right. So <laughs> it's different, man. Yeah. Yes, and I got, you know, I got into comedy. Basically, because my wife got tired of hearing me talk. Mm. So she pushed you to do this? Well, or? she pushed me out to talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> may not have been her. Right. You know, but I, I had to get out, man, and I, I just felt like I had something to say. Nice. And I've always been, I've always wanted to do it. Mm. Actually, so what so I want to do, mic? I want to be a writer. I want, okay. to be a I want to write for TV shows. I want to be a comedy writer. Gosh. But I had a friend, I was at a barbershop. I guess I was kind of go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was at a barbershop. A friend of mine, uh, name is uh, Bo Hawkins. Mm. Big bad Bo. Yeah. He's a comic too. Nice. And uh, I had known him for years. And he told me that he did comedy. I was like, oh, really? I said, oh, man, I've always been interested in doing that. Right. He says, oh, man, I think you'd be good at it. He says, I can get you on stage. I was like, oh, really? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I can do it. I said, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Right? That was in September. My first show was in November. I was at a sold out Main room comedy store. Wow. My very first comedy what? show. What? Had you done a few open mics? And yeah, I've done a few open gotcha. mics. But your book show that you was on on a nice stage I like was that. On, I was on, uh, that was my first wow. main show gotcha. was at the comedy store. Wow. Sold out. Wow. I mean. Is this a belly room? Main room. It was main room. Wow. Yeah, that's heavy. It was main room. Right. It was a main room. Right. So and how man, loud was your stomach bubbling before man, you? Man, I was sweating <laughs> so bad. I was sweating so bad I thought I was going to electrocute myself with the microphone. <laughs> yeah. But I was supposed to do five minutes. Yeah. I was supposed to do five minutes. Yeah. I ended up doing, somebody said I did 13 minutes. Wow. But I had a great set. Nice. I had a great set. I, 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 I never, and I'm yeah. not, I've never had a bad set. Sure. Right? I mean, I don't think, I, I think I can always say something funny. Right. You know, I never bombed. And I just, I had a great set from there on. The, the the producer booked me for more, more shows after that. Nice. You know, now, I granted, they were what they call, you know, you know comic. They were bringing shows. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know? But, you know, I had a lot of, back then, a lot of people would come out and see you. You know, right. when you start, your family and friends. Oh, they all out. on board now. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We saw now, like, one time I had 37 people at a show at Comic Oh, store. man. Right? That's what's up. And that was when I started getting on other shows. And then I got a little confidence. And I said, oh, and I saw the advertisement for Laugh After Dark on Facebook. Mm. And I said, you know what? I think I I had had some good shows. I said, let me try it. Right. And I got it. I think I got the last slot or somewhere near the last slot. Wow. And I. Uh, How was I that moment? 
Oh man, it was great, man. I didn't, I had never done anything like that. I <laughs> right. was just, and I was like, wow, this this is going to be fantastic. Right. And I was nervous then. Hell, man, I don't even do it. Comedy <laughs> right. about man, I say about seven, maybe about seven eight months. Actually, wow. a little over six months, maybe about seven eight months. Yeah. And uh, uh, that show, it was a great show. I was well, I, I felt comfortable. They made the environment comfortable for me. The crowd was cool, and I went up there and I had a decent set. I look back at it now. A little cringy in some oh, places. Man. I'm you know the same way. I know. I watch my old material. I'm just like, oh, oh what are you thinking? Oh, my you? God. Because you've worked and developed that stuff way past that moment. Right, at the right, time you didn't right, say, I'm the right. same way. I'm a biggest critic, too. Yeah, but at that time, man, it was great. And I just, yeah. I, I was grateful for the opportunity. Like, yeah. in the night. Right. You know, in fact, that, like I said, if, if I had to get on the show now, I would think I could do it now. Yeah. But who I was then to try to get on it now right. would be a lot harder. You know, uh, you know, it's, it's grown. Right. This uh, laugh after dark has grown, you know, and uh, and the comics have gotten better and better. The production value is is higher and higher. Uh, right. So it, this is a wonderful thing. That's why That's I was dope. thrilled to get the opportunity to come here. That's dope. And, and, and That's talk dope. tonight as one of the. Uh, you know, the first season guys, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, and I'm glad that you're here too because it's full circle. Yes. So it's good to still be able to bring it back to where, where you sure, started, man. to see the growth of the brand, see the growth in yourself. Uh, another question, man, or at least one last little tidbit I want to leave on because I think that's kind of key with, with, with kind of our interview is, you know, your age. You know, a, a lot of times, you know, that is a big factor for why people don't do things. You can come up with a million million reasons why. What 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 would you say to a comedian, a singer, an artist, or entertainer who's watching this that may have questions of, I don't know if I still have the time or if I can do this, that may be uh, struggling with being able to put themselves out there like that? Well, you know, especially someone who actualized something that I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I just say, man, you just... Every every day, if you got breath in your lungs, mm -hmm. you know it is not too late to do anything. Mm -hmm. Now, I now I granted there are times where I wish I said, "Oh, going if I had more time to do this and do that." Yeah. But one thing I have learned, and I learned this from a young comic man. Mm -hmm. This kid was about twenty something years old, and I was doing one of those uh, on one of those. Oh, I wish I died. Blah, 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 right. You know. Right. And he says, "Man, you can't question God's time." Mm. And, and I thought, I said, man, that was one of the, uh, that was deep, man. And that was a very wise statement. Right. And and I realized, I said, you know, everything happens when it was supposed to yeah, happen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so if this is something you want to do right now, you do it. And and you know what? And if God ordains this to do, you to do this, it's nothing going to stand in your way. Right. I mean, look at me, man. I, I, here I am. Sit here. Right, here you are. You know what I'm saying? Here I'm, an IT guy today. I've been <laughs> screaming at my guys who work for me about shit all day about right. servers and switches and routers and all right. of that technical stuff. And then here I am doing something like this right. at night. Right. You know what I'm saying? This is something I love, man. I, I'm an artist at heart. Right. And if you feel this in your heart, I don't care what age you are, whether it's music or art or science, whatever it is, right. you know, do it. Right. It doesn't stop you. Right. The only thing stopping you is yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Go for it, man. And that's what I did. I, I went for it. Nice. And I'm still going for it. Nice. Right? Well, that's good, man. And I'm, and I'm, I'm glad to see you still pushing through, man. And I can't wait to it see is. what you have in store. What, uh, what, what's, the, what's the end goal for you? I mean, obviously, you're having fun with stand-up now. Is there something else that really you just have to cross off the list of, like, I want to get here or I want to do this? Or right now, are you really, you feel like you're living your, your, your calling right now and just having fun? Or is there another Well, end, you know, um, my, my goal is this. Even when I started comedy, I, I'm one of those guys. When I started comedy, one of the things I did was uh, I researched, well, because one thing my dad, growing up, I'm going back a long time, yeah. my dad was a huge comedy fan. Mm. So I grew up watching all the old comics. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I watched the Red. Milton Burrows. I watched the, Rich, the yeah. uh, uh, Red Skeltons. I watched yeah. the uh, 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 Moms Mabley's. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I watched all those people. Wow. And so I grew up watching comedy. My, my, I lived in a, uh, a comedy-loved household, right? right? And so when I started, that's the one thing I said, well, I'm going to study these guys. I know about them. And I started looking at, uh, you know, some of the silent characters, you mm -hmm. know, like Buster Keaton, mm -hmm. Charlie Chaplin, mm -hmm. because they, they were comic geniuses, but they had no voice. Right. So they had to use their face and their hands and their body. So I studied that to add that to my game. Right. So what I'm saying is to make a, a longer story longer <laughs> is is... If you're going to do something, just make sure you 
go all, go 100%. Yeah. Go 100. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Study your craft. Learn your craft. Yeah. You know, polish yourself. You know, study all the great ones and all the ones that you want to be like. There's a reason that they did, how they got where they were. Mm -hmm. You know, and each one, everyone will show you something different. You know, I'm a huge Jerry Seinfeld fan. Oh, yeah. Not because I think, not just because I think he's witty and funny, mm -hmm. but watch what he does with his hands. Mm -hmm. When he's on stage and what he does with his hands are yeah. so expressive. Right. So if you cut off the volume, you could kind of understand what he's doing just yeah. with his hands. And that adds stuff to your act. So that's kind of stuff that I, I mean, I, I like the science of comedy. Right, too. right, right. You so stand-up is where, you, where you're at and where you love it. Well, you know, I just want to be the best I can be. For sure. So wherever it takes me. Gotcha. You know, if it takes me, I, mean, I never thought I was going to be producing shows. Sure. I produce, I'll produce three, four shows, right. right, at different clubs. I was, you know, I'm a good producer, right. you know, because I know quality. Right. Right? But, uh. I don't know, man. I just, I just like, I just like being part of like art. I want to do it productions like this. I like music. I thought it was a halfway decent piano player till I was listening to Robert <laughs> play, and he screwed me up so bad. Yeah. I'm just now. So let me get back on these jokes that. real quick. Yeah, let me get back on these jokes real quick. <laughs> yeah, man. I was playing around it during one of the shows when yeah. he came out and played. I was like, oh, okay. What? That's how it's done. <laughs> I didn't even know that song sound like that. Right, right, right. right? But uh, you know, I just I'm into that. I make music. Gotcha, nice. You know, I I want to I want to make videos as films. I want to do nice. I just, I'm just an artist, man. Nice. I, I want to do it all. I used to paint, I draw, you know, everything. Wow, wow, wow. I'm just an artsy, artful guy, and uh, and uh, so awesome, awesome. Wherever awesome, it takes man. me, that's where it takes me. Nice. I don't care about money. I don't care about success. I figure if I just be the best that I can do. It's, it's gonna. Whatever happens, is gonna happen. Right, right. right. I think that's, that's all. It. I think that's all that we can do is put our right. best foot forward. And life has a way of working out the way it's supposed to. We get that's caught right. up in our own individual plans, mm -hmm. and that's a you know a road leading to disaster. But you know, Absolutely. I think once you start to embrace the natural process of how life folds and carries you, while still putting your best foot forward. That's how you really start to kind of really, you know, maximize your life. Yes, man. so dope, I, man. I agree. Daryl, I'm glad you took some time to, to, man, to I'm bless glad me, you man. Guys had me, you know, man. I had it's an OG right here, here. y'all. I'm with the OG today, man. Anytime I get to talk to an OG <laughs> in the game who's been here, been in the streets, seen things that I haven't, man. I love yeah. to, pick, to pick your brain, man. So shit, I'm down for the talk anytime. All this shit ain't gonna be here the next time, but I'm always down to pick your brain. That's right. Thank you, brother. <laughs> and I'm glad to be able to uh, exchange uh, change words with a young, smart. Upcoming brother like yourself. I appreciate that, Thank man. You. Please let the people know where they can follow you and where they can keep up with you at before we get up out of here. Okay, uh, Daryl K. Mack, D-A-R-Y-L-K-A-M-A-C-K. -A 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 uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. I, I, I'm doing shows. Uh, you Damn Right is one of the shows I produce. Also, the Mac and Bo Show and the Wednesday Show. So you can find follow me on uh, Facebook or Instagram, and you can find out all the information about all the shows and all the things that I'm doing. Just like that, man. Super simple, man. Yo, we with the OGs. Yo, it's been your boy, Charlie Wilson TV. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another fire episode of Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. Y'all stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much to everybody that's been liking and sharing and subscribing to the site. Yo, the feedback has been amazing. Comedians, stop hitting me up. I can't get everybody on, baby. Hey, if you haven't already, stop what you're doing and like, subscribe, and share. Hit that, hit that little bell right there. It's right, it's, look, it's right there.